Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome back to the Amazing Race After Show here at AfterBuzzTV.com for Season 27, Episode 11, It's Not Easy Beating Green. I'm your host, James Wallington, and across the table from me is... Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Carroll, and... I'm Marie Mazaki. Well, we have a full house today. I know, finally. <laughs> so exciting, and especially for a crazy, crazy episode. I did not see that coming, as Phil said at the, at the end <laughs> no. of the episode. What were your guys' overall thoughts of the entire episode? I was literally biting my nails the entire episode. I had no idea what was going to happen because there were so many mistakes and then time crunches and delays and this and that. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, I thought I knew what was going to happen like every five seconds. I was like, oh my God, I know what's going to happen. And then like it switched. Like the editing was just yeah. amazing. Like I had anxiety the whole time. So it was it was good. It was suspenseful and entertaining. Agreed. Uh, we'll dive right in to episode 11. It's not easy beating green. <laughs> At the beginning of this episode, we see some of the discussion about the U-turn that happened on the prior leg. The green team, you turned the paparazzi. Of course, Chris and Logan are not very thrilled about it. They said, if we did not like the green team before, we really, really don't like them now. <laughs> And then Justin says, I always said, if you're going to U-turn someone, you need to make sure that they're the ones that go home. Whatever, who cares? Have fun staring at my back. Justin's getting a little too cocky for his own good. Yes, yeah. he is. <laughs> but, like, also, I mean, it's, again, the U-turn is part of the game. Like, exactly. You, you, can't, you can be like, all right, we hate you now because you U-turned us. But you have to know that, like, you probably would have done the same thing. And there's teams that don't use it, but there's teams that always use it. You should mm -hmm. always use it. Why not? Right. It's part of the game. So, I mean, I don't like his cocky attitude, obviously. But I have nothing wrong with him U-turning them. I don't no. think that, like... You know, I think that's fine. Of course, of course, I mean, I'm sure it stings a little because it's like, oh, you're hindering my game. There's right. a million dollars right. on the line. But if you really, like, remove yourself from the situation for a second, like of you course. said, it's a game. Yeah. It's a game. It's part of the rules. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of the leg, teams were instructed to fly to Hong Kong. Once there, they had to search outside for awaiting Rolls Royce to escort them to the peninsula Hong Kong. Kong. Justin and Diana were the first ones to leave the mat at 7.40 a.m. Of course, they're talking about how this is their seventh win. Winning this leg means it would be tied for the uh -huh. record for the most wins in Amazing Race history, which we talked about last week, that it was Dave and Rachel from season 20. So, yeah. That's insane. And I feel like that could go either way. Like, they talk about it so much that that could either mean it's definitely going to happen or, like, they're going to look stupid because it's not going to happen. Like, Either way, I'm not really sure, but they're definitely in editing showing us so much of them. Like every single leg they repeat about, you know, the record and that they want to break it and whatnot. So I know it makes you think, well, obviously they didn't break it. So yeah, like, but when you're seeing it happen, you're like, oh my, is it, does that mean I it's going to happen? Like, are they already giving us that? So, but I'm glad it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Diana, just for the record. I love yeah. Diana. Well, you know, Justin is pretty convinced that it's their destiny to win this record and it's their destiny to win the race. We'll see about that, Justin. <laughs> Kelsey and Joey leave at 7.47 a.m. Joey's talking about how the final three is right around the corner and that they're going to get a first place win. It's going to happen. They've gotten four second places in a row. Oh my I'm gosh. really like Could rooting for them. I know, me too. This really reminded me of my season with Jason and Amy because they were second place like every single leg. So the more they talk about it, it makes me feel like, oh my God, like are they finally gonna get that win? Like, so I was expecting maybe this episode, but you know, now I'm like, okay. Oh my gosh, what if they get first place? They have to. I, I I'm Honestly, so, I'm so better. tough to figure I'm out. For them. Like they we're getting ahead they of deserve ourselves, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then Tiffany and Chris said the cheerleaders leaving at 8 50 a.m. Tiffany's talking about how they've come such a long way. I could not agree more. As I said later in the episode, of course, the teams thought that they were gonna be one of the first teams eliminated. But hey, they're proving themselves. Chris just said though, it's not easy beating green, which 
Alas, was the quote of that <laughs> yeah. episode. And then Logan and Chris leaving at 8.54 a.m. Nothing was uh, climactic about the travel this episode. Everyone was on the same flight. Equalizer. Wah, wah. Yeah. All teams on the same flight heading to Hong Kong. Once they land, the cheerleaders were the first to leave the airport. And I was literally so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, those are my girls. Yeah. And I thought that they were going to keep that momentum up pretty much throughout the entire one. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Then Chris said something that I was like, uh, he goes, we're usually the ones following the Rolls Royce, but it's a nice change for things. <laughs> I didn't even I catch know. that. <laughs> <laughs> Once they get to the peninsula, their clue is for their detour, Sam's or Cells. And Sam's teams traveled to Sam's tailor to pick up measurements for a suit jacket, then headed to Sam's workshop where they had to properly cut out six template pieces of a matching design. They then had to deliver a finished suit back to Sam's tailor to receive their next clue. In sales, teams had to travel to a marked store on a street and search through boxes of used cell phones to find one that turns on. Upon dialing a number displayed on the phone, a message would instruct them to travel to an address on another street where they would find their next clue. Which detour would you ladies have done? The cell phone one just sounded complicated and digging through boxes to find a cell phone to turn on just... It sounds like too simple, so there had it had to be complicated or hard. So I would have probably done the Taylor one. Yeah, the Taylor is a smarter one because there's something you have to do. You get it done. You know, if you're bad at it, then it takes a long time. If you follow the directions, then you just get it done. Um, right. The cell phone thing could be easy, but then again, you're looking through these boxes. You don't know how long that could take. Like, what if there's like 500 boxes and you're there forever? So yeah. I think. The smarter thing is to go ahead and do the sews, but right. I mean, it didn't really work out that way. I agree. I probably would have done the tailor thing, but then it, sometimes I think like with something like the cells, are there only four cell phones that turn on, or do you think they have like twelve in all these buckets? You know, it's like, like you said, it's like finding a needle in a haystack, right. and it's just your luck of the draw. I know. So it's really t- like I don't know. I just that one would make me more uncomfortable than the Sam's portion of the detour. Right. A lot of people in the live chat are weighing in right now about which detour they would have done. And surprisingly, it looks like cell phone, cell phone yeah. is a little bit higher on the well, ranking they're saying than Sam's is Sam's. judged, but Sam's is judged as in whether you did it correctly or not. It's right. not like you're rapping and someone says you're not good at this. Or you didn't cut it right. You know, this is like <laughs> you're you're putting something together, you're building something. I mean, in in my season the same thing, like my our robot thing. Like, yeah, if you got it right, then you were done. You're, someone would say yes or no, they're judging you, but if you get it right, you can't be wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I still think it's the the smarter way to go, but if you get lucky on the cell phones, it's so much quicker. Oh yeah, I yeah, can imagine. Yeah, the other one you have to pay attention to detail. For Which sure. we saw some teams struggle with, yes. Tiffany and Chris <laughs> at first. They were struggling with that. Then Joey and Kelsey started struggling with that, and then the paparazzi. It seemed like everyone at first didn't realize you had to Fold, fold them mm-hmm. to get the two opposite right. pieces. Otherwise, they wouldn't have matched up properly. So, Krista and Tiffany going into this detour were totally confident because they've had experience making costumes mm-hmm. and other things. So, hey, power to the girls. I was really, again, <laughs> like, yeah, they're leading the pack. This is awesome. Um, Joey was, you know, making a comment about Tiffany and Krista. I was like, yeah, they keep putting their fabric on a mannequin when all you have to do is just trace the pieces. I they overthought the whole thing. They were mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, we're building a suit. So, like, they, <laughs> they read, you read the clue, but, like, you don't read it. The first two times you read it, literally, like, you have no idea what happened. Like, you nothing sinks in. So I think when you're trying to rush a little bit, like, they read it, but they we're still thinking, okay, we're making a suit. Like, So they were looking at the mannequin, they were trying to do everything perfect, and it, it wasn't that difficult. They kind of overthought the whole thing. Don't you think, and you know, maybe you're just so caught up in the moment, but after you know, 27 seasons, and even this far in the race, wouldn't you know to like really read the clue, like word for word you by now? You think you would, but like you just don't. <laughs> you, yeah. I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if anything like that happened with us, but it did happen with a bunch of people on you our season. Every, it happens every single yeah. season. You just like read the damn clue. I know. 
it's but, crazy. Well, even to uh, halfway through, Tiffany and Chris are like, read the clue, read the yeah. clue. So they like reread it, and I think yeah. that's when like gears started going on. Like, oh, we got to because do it the clue this is way. short. I mean, there's a couple sentences in the clue that gets read aloud, and then there's another piece of paper behind it that has tons of additional information on it, which tells you do this, don't do that, you have to do this, whatever. So we as the viewers don't see that, but there is some important information in the additional page that you mm-hmm. get. So the if you don't, <laughs> yeah, if you don't thoroughly read that and you just kind of read the first clue and start going, you could totally screw up. Mm. Mm. Well, of course, the cheerleaders, once they got it together, were the first team to leave that Sam's detour. Yeah, girls leading the pack. Yeah. Then the reporters leaving the paparazzi behind. Then on the other side, with the sales part of this detour, Justin and Diana were the only team, which again can be a little risky, mm. going to one side of the detour and with no other teams there. And they got lucky. Really so lucky. So lucky. Yeah. I'm really curious to know how long they were actually there, though. Like, how many phones did you think they actually went through? I know, and I'm cre- curious to know, like, how many cell phones actually did turn on, like what you were wondering earlier. Like, how many cell phones out of that whole, whole shop, you know, were there? I love how old school the phones I know. Were. I know. <laughs> so crazy. So they find their needle in a haystack. They were given the instructions to go to the other street to find their clue. Uh, but unfortunately, Uh-oh. they got a little too trigger happy when they found out the street name and thought they would have to take a taxi mm-hmm. to that destination. Unfortunately, that set them back just a little bit because it turned out the street was only like a street oh over. My God. Could you imagine? Yeah, like that's <gasps> insane. What do you think happened? It just happens. Like sometimes you think that like, oh, it can't be that simple. You know, you're running around looking for something, being like, it's not right here. I mean, we did that in our season. We ran like three miles in Abu Dhabi looking for the U-turn board that was like right after the uh, the detour. Because you're like, it's not right there. Like, right. we have to look for it, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it just probably seemed to them that like it seemed too easy that, okay, we found the phone like so quick and now we're going to walk 10 feet across the street. So your, your mind is going, okay, we're done. We're going to hop in the cab because that's what we do. Right. Um, and I feel like once they found like, a taxi driver who assumed he knew where they were going, they're like, all right, great. He knows. Let's go. Yeah. Because you don't know. When somebody tells you that they know where something is, you're like, okay. Like, what are you going to yeah. do? Well, Justin in the live chat is giving us some inside scoop to the cell part of this detour. It took them about 10 minutes, apparently, and more than half of the cell phones turned on. But the trick was not every cell phone had the message to call that number. Oh. So they could turn on, but then you're just kind of like waiting for that yeah. message. But 10 minutes, that yeah, really see, that, like, is luck. That makes me mad. Like, just a, a detour this far into the race shouldn't take 10 minutes. Well, I think they just really lucked out. I, I mean, guess think they about did, it, like, but like there should have been hundreds of more cell phones. Like, it, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. I just it just because seems... you can turn a lot of cell phones on at once. It's not like you have to turn it right. on, wait for that one to turn. Nope. Boom, Next boom, boom. Next turn. It's yeah. literally just press, 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 press. Which one of these load up? Oh, this one has a message. Right. Let's call and it. there was like maybe like four or five different bins of them and whatnot. Like I would have liked to seen like twenty five different bins with only four cell phones inside of them. Right. Um, because you know the so side of the detour took a long time so Mm -hmm. I don't know it's just I guess if you get lucky you get lucky but I would have liked for maybe production to not have given someone the option to get that lucky like maybe make it a little bit I would have assumed it would have been like a whole store full of cell phones not like three crates outside on the street right Um, but because of this little mistake they had in getting in the taxi Sunshah Silla Hedgehog 7 in the live chat said Justin I was cringing while watching you and Diana in that taxi I know there was a lot of tension in that backseat I cannot imagine being that taxi driver I know (laughs) what did you guys think of this kind of interaction and little riff between the two of them well we saw a different side of Justin Mm-hmm. He, I don't know, I mean, he's, I know he said it later on in the episode, but he really does take the pressure and stress out on poor Diana. And she was just sitting there in the exact same situation, and he was, like, blowing up on her, and I felt mm-hmm. really bad. And we haven't really seen that side of Justin, because he has been in the lead the whole time. Right. So, obviously, when pressure's on, he takes it out on poor mm-hmm. Diana. Yeah, I was waiting for that to come out. I mean, you guys know I'm not a huge Justin fan. Um, <laughs> but I I kind of saw it coming and I was like, yep, there it is. That's that's what he's like. And, you know, that doesn't mean that he's like a horrible person right. when they're at home. Um, but the race can bring out the worst in people. Um, you see it on other seasons. People love couples the whole time. Then it gets close to the final three. And, you know, one teammate ends up being like horrible to their partner. Um, I don't think it was that bad given the situation that they were in. But I 
definitely like wasn't a fan of him after that. I was just like, shut up. Right. Mm -hmm. And she kept her cool. Like she was, you know, she didn't argue back with him. She was just kind of like, you're being an idiot. Like stop, you know. I know. She she tried to stop it so many times and he just kept going after her. And I was like, oh my God, just drop it already. Yeah. Justin in the live chat says, I hate that I was upset with Diana. Which, you know, in Justin's defense later on in the episode, sure in that five minute cringeworthy taxi cab ride, Sure, it was tense, but later on, Justin did say, I'm sorry that I take my frustrations out on you. I mean, that's a real man to accept your flaws. Mm -hmm. A lot of men have pride where they're like, I'm not going to say I'm sorry or that I'm wrong. So, you know, power to Justin for doing that. But yeah, in those moments, I was like, yikes, like... Ah. I just wish you would have learned from it earlier because this is like the third time this has happened where, you know, he yells at her and then at the end of the episode, he's like, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done blah, blah, blah. So he's got to learn how to kind of control that. Um, Because I, I, like, again, I think she's a great partner. Had that been anyone else, had that been me sitting next to him in the cab, like, that wouldn't have went that way. It would have gone so far out of control. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't, uh, actually, I could imagine. But she knows how to, like, keep her cool. And even though she knows he's wrong and he's not going to admit that he's wrong, she doesn't want to make it worse. Right. So. Hmm. Well, I, I do the same thing, Justin. I take my anger out on the people I love the most. So. It's human. I think it's human. Yeah, totally. Made me realize that I need to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Once teams completed the detour, they were given their next clue, which instructed teams to travel to Hong Kong Macau Ferry Terminal to take the Turbo Jet Ferry to Macau, then make their way to the City of Dreams. There was a lot of uh, confusion because a green team, once again, making a mistake in this leg of the race, they went to the the different island ferry? Right. Is that what it sounded like? Yeah. One was called Kalawana or there something? There were two sides, I guess, and they had to get on on the one side. Yeah. And I think when they first got there, too, I mean, I immediately realized it when he was asking for specific tickets or seats. Yeah. And they were like, we don't have the regular ones. We only have these. And, like, that should have been the clue right then and there that what you were told to purchase isn't available here. Like, you're not in the right place. Um, but they, they took them anyway and, you know. And he, they were given, even the taxi driver was like, oh, there was there's two places on two different islands. This one's closer, but there are two. Yeah. So he, what, you know, just like you said, once he got there and he couldn't buy that ticket, he probably should have clicked in like, hmm, wrong one. But the minute he got on there and I knew there was going to be a penalty. Mm-hmm. There had to have been. Because yeah. it was, I, w- right I was going to be so the wrong mad fairy. if there wasn't a penalty. <laughs> but you also don't know, like how long the penalty is going to be, usually like a half an hour for something like that. Even if they knew they were wrong, maybe does it take more than a half an hour to go back to the other one and get on the right one and sure. then travel? It might have been worth it to be like, just give us the 30 minutes. Oh. And take that ferry. Right. That's we a don't, really we don't good really point. know how long. Because so. maybe, maybe getting, yeah, what if it was like an hour to get to the other yeah. ferry at yeah. that point? And but, then you so don't they, know what time they leave and are you going to be waiting there? Like they got there, ferry leaves in like five minutes. They're like, let's just take 30 minutes. I don't yeah. know if they knew that or not, but that's something to think about. That's yeah. really true. Hmm, good question. Justin, weigh in on that conversation for us in the live chat, please. (laughs) (laughs) Once they get to the City of Dreams, it was their roadblock. Who wants to rise to the occasion? I was obsessed, obsessed with this roadblock. I I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it, (laughs) too. It was so fun. What did you think, Marie? Um, There was a lot. There was a lot going on with this. I was like, I almost didn't like that there was so much show, you Mm -hmm. know, because I'm more of the person that wants to just do something and, like, the time spent is 100% my time doing what I'm doing. Right. So the fact that, like, they sat down and someone was doing their makeup and, like, what if someone took longer to do someone's makeup than the other person? And then, you know, they're all going in at the same time and there's these sets of it's going to go every 30 minutes and it's going to take 30 minutes. Like... I didn't like that. I think it's nice for TV, and I think it's really cool that we got to see this big, amazing show. But had I been the person that was doing that roadblock, I would have been mad. Sure. If you had to redo it over and over. Yeah, like, I just, I didn't like, it was all about, yeah, the fluff, the theatrics, the show, the whatnot. I'm, like, a person who wants to get to a spot and build something and leave, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I thought that that kind of controlled the amount of time that everybody was there too much. Yeah. So I wasn't really a fan of it, but it was really cool to watch. It was cool. And I, at first, I thought they had to dive off those boards. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, so if they had a dive, I would have, like, hyperventilated because that is so scary. And when I saw all the professionals, like, doing these, like, twists and turns, I was like, oh, shit. Do they have to do that? (laughs) I was like, oh, my God. Do they have to do that? Because that's really scary. But then when they just had to jump in, I was like, oh, easy. Yeah. Well, I... 
there's also so many layers to this roadblock if you really want to like dissect it. I was thinking, okay, if you're on one mast over here and someone's over here, like where in relation are, are the, the fish? Like what if this person dumps in and then they're right there? Yeah, I, I don't just know if they feel were like on just one side of the pool. It looked like it was just one line of fish in the pool. So every time you see it, it's like they went to that same spot. So I don't know. Which is why I don't understand why Krista had such a hard time because if she saw where everyone else was getting their gold fish, why didn't she just go right there? That's what I kept thinking. Like, she's here. Someone else is here. They go down. They come up with the fish. Krista, go there. Yeah. I think you're more focused on finding the fish than seeing where your opponents are at that point. Because there's so much going on that it's like, why add that one extra layer? Yeah, being but, like, where is everyone else? Because I think I would have jumped in assuming that they were all over the that's pool. That's what I would have thought. Not in just like, one I line. Have, Okay, fine. She got the one that's over there. Let me look over here. Right. You know, I don't think... That was really the case. Um, she probably, you probably, there's so there was smoke, there was colors. Yeah. Like I'm sure she, she had a really hard time seeing, yeah. like underwater. I don't know if she wears contacts or like what, but if she, even like if her eyes were bothering her and she couldn't see under the water when she came up, she probably couldn't see above the water either. I'm mm -hmm. sure her eyes were burning. Yeah. Um, you know, she probably wasn't concerned with like looking around where everyone else got the fish. But don't you think that in the moment you would still know like, oh my god, she just got the fish, like. There's one more right, person gone. It. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And also, I, why didn't they give him goggles? Because, like... Yeah, that bothered me. Because that's not even just, like, regular water. Like, no. The water's all different colors. There's all kinds of chemicals in it. Like, how can you just go under and open your eyes? Right. I would have freaked out. I'm, like, mm. I'm not opening I wonder if she does this. wear contacts. I didn't even think of that. Like, I can open my eyes underwater, no problem. But right. some people Some have... people really can't yeah. open their eyes underwater. That's why I feel like... Because we've seen some challenges where, like, if they have to, like, dive into a reef and get a clue, they're usually given, like, snorkel gear or something. Yeah. So why didn't they get any sort of goggles? I don't know. I don't and know. the bubbles and everything, too. So I don't know how... But this is when editing, I was like... Oh, my God. The editors did an amazing job because literally she would swim by the goldfish all the time. Yeah. Literally, what was going through my head, I was like, oh, my God. The poor girl, when she watches this episode, she's going to be hitting herself, like, with a brick on her head. Yeah. But you know what? We don't even really know. Like, you said the editing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Maybe it wasn't that close. Maybe that's not how it went down. I mean, it, it's edited that way to make us be like, oh, my God. Like, every single time she's close. Um, and they could have used the same footage from four different right. angles. Like, she probably swam near the fish one time. I and mean, then we got four angles of that at four different points. I mean, oh my that's God, editing right? for you. Mm -hmm. I doubt it happened like that every single time. So, Krista, we know that you weren't, right. you know. But another question I had is, like, when they were all getting pampered backstage, getting ready for the big show... They were talking about how, like, they all have one common goal, and that's to knock out the green team. So wouldn't you think, like, Kelsey and Logan would have would said, have like, the fish are over here or something? No way. Not at this end of the... Not this far into the race. I think I think I would have, like, waited, maybe, and if I found it and then the show was over as I was getting in the pool and I already found it, I would have been like, just so you know, when you're going in your next show, the fish are right, right. here. Especially when you're, like, Logan and Chris and you see the green team coming in. You know everyone's ahead yeah, of the green true. team. Yeah, so it's like that's your opportunity to see is me like, okay, if we help Tiffany and Krista, then we know for sure the green team's going to get knocked out to the back. Maybe they weren't allowed to say something. Maybe. Is that... No, I, you can. I, I don't really know why they didn't, but sometimes you just, as much as you want to be nice and you think maybe you're helping this team to eliminate this team or whatever, sometimes it's better to just kind of shut up, do your own game, because you never know. Like, what if you... What if... Neither one of them was going to do well. And then you told Krista where it was. She gets it. And you get lost going to the pit stop. Yeah. And then everyone does okay. Like, if someone's doing bad at this point in the game, let them do bad and keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in the live chat, Tiffany from the cheerleaders is saying Krista does not wear contacts. She said that the bubbles from the water were blocking the fish. And in the beginning, she thought that the fish were all the way at the bottom. See, that's another thing. Yeah, like, she kept diving like past where it was. Like if it was weighted at the bottom of the pool. Yeah. yeah. So, so many factors. That's why I loved this robot because it was just so insane. I would have assumed they were at the bottom too. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have thought they were like on the side on a stick. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just give her props. I mean, doing it, how many times did she do it? Four or five? I think five. Five, yeah. Five, five times doing that and yeah. seeing everyone come and get it. Pretty much on their, but everyone got on their first try, their first. Yeah, I think so. Oh my gosh, I, I mean, the fact that she just kept going and she had a little meltdown towards the end, but Tiffany was there to support her, and mm -hmm. they, I mean, that was a mar remarkable. Right, Mr. Arisonic in the live chat actually said Logan said that she thought Kelsey would. I don't know what Kelsey has to say about it. I don't know if I caught Logan mentioning that Kelsey would probably tell the cheerleaders where the fish were, but 
I think that's what he's implying. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever caught a comment of like them saying, oh, the reporters will tell them. But, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well. I loved when the paparazzi were leaving. Diana goes, how was it, Logan? She goes, mm, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't try to be friends. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the green team leaves, once Diana gets the fish, Justin's all like, you know, you know, stay strong or whatever, Krista, don't give up. And Chris is all like, oh, now you're encouraging me yeah, after you're leaving, stupid. please. I would have been like, shut up. Yeah. Don't say anything to me. Yeah, <laughs> don't talk to me. And especially Justin was like, come on, run. And she's like, what am I doing? Just skipping along? Like, he was like, no, run, run. Like, he she's was- like, I'm running as fast as I can. Like, yeah. she's not walking. Again, it just gets to you. Like, I mean, Tim did that to me a few times, too. Like, we're sprinting somewhere, and he's, like, yelling at me. And I'm like, I'm going as fast as I can. Right. Like, I'm yeah. not walking. You're 6'4", and yeah. you're sprinting. Like, I'm not going to be as fast <laughs> as you. So just slow down, run at my pace, and stop yelling. Yeah. Well, Justin, in the live chat, I love this insight that we get every week <laughs> from the racers. He said that Krista said that she was shocked that nobody helped her after they ended up finding the fish. Even Tiffany said nobody helped her and we were shocked. Yeah. So at that point, it's like if you know the team you've been trying to get out this entire race and the cheerleaders are ahead of them. Know. I feel like you still don't, though. Like, mm. would you, James? Your final four, okay? I don't know. I'm maybe I'm just biased. Well, I, I got mad too. Like in our season, our our whole plan was let's eliminate the Afghan animals, and we got to our roadblock, and there was four of us left. And I asked the other two teams for help, and they just straight up ignored me. And I was like so mad. I was like, wait, but I thought we were trying to get rid of the Afghan yeah. animals. What's going on? Looking back on it, you know, obviously I get it. Like, don't help anybody. I wouldn't have helped either. But. Chris is so cute and so nice. Like, how can you not help her? Right. But if it was any other team, like, I'd be like, 100% don't help. Don't help anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just a little different situation because, like, you love her. You know? I know, I but know. But, like, the, let's say, let's reverse it. Let's say James, Earl, and Denise made it through. I think Denise would have had to end up doing this just because of the evening out the roadblocks. Yeah. Would anyone have helped Denise? I'm pretty sure someone would have. For sure. Because it's Denise. Mm-hmm. No? Yes and no. But I think Chris, I think it's the same. Like, how mm. do you... You would have to be I so mean, sure that you're not threatened by them after that. Had this been a detour, I'd say yes, but this is the end of the leg. You know when you get out of the roadblock, you're running like the to the mat. Yeah, so if you're smart, you're not going to help anybody. Yeah. yeah, if I was in the race, even though like right now I wanted to just like reach out and help her and give her a hug, if I was in the race, I'd been like, bye, girl, I'm going. Especially when you know it's like the leg before the final Yeah, right. That's I true. Been, I love yeah. you. Sorry. Bye. Yeah. Tiffany said James Earl said he would have helped us. So Maybe you say that after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> Once team successfully completed the roadblock, they were given their next clue, which instructed them to travel to Centro Nautico de Praia Grande at the side of the Namvan Lake and search for the pit stop. This pit stop was so dramatic. <laughs> anything could have happened. In first place, shocking paparazzi. What is that all about? I was really hoping it was the reporters. I was too. I was. I thought this was going to be their time, but yeah. hopefully we're saving the reporters for the final. Right. Final. True. <laughs> but I also was thrilled it was paparazzi because they're on my fantasy team. So give me God. those points, please. <laughs> but what I did hear, so when Phil's at the mat and he goes, the last team here, he normally says it may be eliminated. This episode he said will be eliminated. I love that you caught that. Yes. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Phil. He mm-hmm. just said someone will be eliminated. And then that's when, when I heard that the the green team had their penalty, I was like, oh shit, someone is getting eliminated. I know, I thought that was it. That had me, I was like, oh my God, they had like two penalties. This is how it's gonna happen. But then again, Krista and Tiffany, like their mindset was, they're out. we know we're out. Like she finished it just like for herself to finish it. Like yeah. there was no chance in hell that, you know, they were still in this because think about how long each show took and how much time it went by and how many tries she went through. Like no chance in hell they're getting there. So it made me like, I wanted to be like, oh my God, like they have no idea that like they're sitting yeah. there for 50 minutes or whatever it is. Like editing makes us think that like there was a chance Mm -hmm. but again we really don't know the time and the amount of time like well may have not been close at all well justin said that she had to fail two times for them to like be like 100 percent right because that would have taken up 40 minutes the two shows and then like he said 10 minutes of driving so you know the fact that she got it on the second try 
I think that she just, there was no more drive. They weren't still racing. They weren't trying to get to the pit right. stop fast. For them, it was already over. It was already over. So they were taking their time. And even though they were still, you know, running and having a, having a right attitude, who knows? I mean, I'm actually curious to know when the green team got to the mat, how many minutes did it take for the cheerleaders to actually get there? Yeah, that's what I want to know. If it was actually close or not. But yeah. they're not going to tell us that because we need to think it's close and that's it. Yeah. Because <laughs> the editing made it look like it was close. We, uh, second place was the reporters. Green team checks in. They took the wrong ferry to Macau. So they incurred a penalty of 30 minutes. And because that ferry was 25 minutes closer, they got 25 additional minutes. So their total penalty was 55 minutes. Of course, the cheerleaders are in their taxi. The editing was just like, oh, what's going to happen? In the live chat... Tiffany says they were five, five minutes. minutes from the mat. That is insane. Oh, like my that God. makes five me minutes. think that like if you had just like hustled at I know. the end of the thing and like ran when you got out of your taxi. But they also didn't know the green right. team had a penalty. Yeah. It's like if but you, you would have, have had to, that the in race mind. Is not, it's not over until it's over. Like so I don't know how many seasons have it. to like how many times we have to see something like this happen for everybody to know. Sure. You're not out until Phil says you're out. Like you, True. even if you're five hours behind everybody, you have to keep racing. Like th- it happened to us. We were so sure we were eliminated on like the third leg, and then we found out that like Ephraim and, and um, Chester missed up their flights and were 22 hours behind. We were we were like walking. We were like, oh, we're going home. This sucks, you know, whatever. And then we find out that like they never made it there. Yeah. So it's like a wake up call. Like don't ever yeah, give up until you could be Phil hours behind. Eliminated. But you got to just keep going 100. percent Right. Amen. That's Honestly, really good advice. When Krista was having her little meltdown, though, I was like, just don't give up. I was like, I just really didn't want her to give up. I really mm-hmm. want her to finish it and get to the pit stop. So I'm happy that she did. But even that, you know, that little moment that she had to recuperate, that could have been the five minutes. Right. Tiffany's saying that they were hustling because they thought something might have happened. It was our cab driver. He got lost for 40 minutes. <gasps> See, they didn't even mm. show that. Makes but if that wonder. was an additional 40 minutes, then how were they only five minutes from the mat? Like, it doesn't, the time doesn't, the time never. Makes sense. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid cab driver. <laughs> Tiffany, um, once Tiffany and Krista made it to the mat, they said two females, you know, beat out men and track stars. Krista says a lot of us thought we were going to be the first team gone. So I think that they had a beautiful journey on The Amazing Race and definitely proved to a lot of people that you shouldn't, you know, judge someone by how they look. They're a lot mm-hmm. stronger than you might think. So I'm really proud of Tiffany and Krista and they put up one hell of a fight to get to the final four. Yeah, yeah. I think they did great. And you know what? I'm not even mad that they're gone right now because maybe a little unfinished business, season 30. See you guys there. <laughs> oh my God, that'd be an awesome alliance. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome, yeah. Oh my God, Sweeney would try to get with both of them. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet Lord Jesus. All right, let's talk about <laughs> our fantasy teams. I finally have a graphic this week, and oh my gosh, it puts things into perspective. We are that close. Oh my God. To the finish line. There's three teams left. One more episode. This is insane. I can't believe it. So, uh, Marie, yeah. since you don't have any people on your team <laughs> left, of the three teams left, who are you rooting for, and who do you think has the strongest shot at taking home the million dollar prize? I am rooting for Joey and Kelsey. Yeah. Okay. Lots of seconds. Um, you know, I didn't, the paparazzi I didn't like to begin with, um, but Logan has totally grown on me. Um, I still don't like Chris. Um, no. They they remind me a lot of Tim and I. Um, I literally, like, I feel her pain. I, like, she could do this on her own. She doesn't even need him there. She's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, so I am kind of rooting for them because I'm rooting for her. Um, but I would be so happy if Kelsey and Joey won this because I don't want the green team to win. Sure. All right, Jess, you are the only person in this league that has two teams left. Yay! Your odds are so high <laughs> of taking home the win this season. Who of your two teams stands the strongest chance at winning? I don't know. I'm torn. I mean, I think it's definitely going to be the reporters or the green team. I love Logan, but Chris is, he's just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. He's like whines the whole time yeah. and just like he's like, well, I'm should we do this? She, she knows what she's doing. Listen to her and shut up. Mm-hmm. Seriously, I mean, people say Justin's annoying. No, no, no. Chris definitely takes the cake. But I really hope the reporters get first because they've been getting second every single leg. They deserve a first, and they've been 
you know, keeping their spirits up and they haven't given up. They haven't really made e even any big mistakes. They've just come, you know, those few seconds behind. So I really hope the reporters get first, but I would be happy if Justin gets first too. All right. And I definitely don't think the paparazzi have a chance in heck and winning. No. I mean, I don't even remember a season where a team might have had like a poor edit where they're just like seen as like villains or annoying and they're not really rootable winning the show. Yeah. No, Somehow they're, a team they're you always second like, place team. Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I think because of the nature of how Amazing Race works, it's usually a team we end up rooting for. So I'm going to say it's either the green team or the reporters, of course. But I'm I'm gonna say I'm kind of hoping it's the reporters only because they have had the second yeah. chance story this entire time. So it'd be awesome to see them win the final leg, the most important leg of all. And I'm only saying that because the green team, if they don't win, of course, you know, Justin, you'll have a chance at coming back for all stars. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah, you would I love that if, even like, more. Justin's edit didn't take the turn like it did, yes. then I would be like, oh, for sure, green team. This is gonna be that feel good ending with yep. the super fans. But like right towards the end, when you know when somebody's edit takes that turn, there, I, I feel like we see now all of a sudden the reporters talking about second place, second place, second place. Mm -hmm. Justin's a jerk. Like now I think the reporters are going to win just because of that. And there was also a clip in the, the preview for the finale where Justin's on the side of the road all flustered saying we shouldn't have gotten rid of our cab. And like we've seen in previous seasons, the cab could make or break, or break. your success at crossing the finish line first. So, you know, the way I've seen the story arc for the tr green team going is that you know, Justin being the eager beaver that he is and such a diehard super fan, we've talked about how that could blow up in his face. And in some way, that'd be so poetic of a story arc that it was like, I thought I knew everything, and right. then bam, I didn't win The Amazing Race. Right. So nothing against you, Justin and Diana. <laughs> if you won, I would be elated because you guys are super fans. But I'm just talking from a story arc perspective. It yeah. wouldn't surprise me if you did not win. Yeah. Right. So. And the second place team the whole time always gets first. That would be cool. Yeah. So it's going to be an exciting finale. I can't wait to see what happens. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys for tuning in to another After Show this week. Marie, where can they find you on you social media? You can find me at Reebsicle on all social media. And Jess. And you guys can find me at DressJessXO. And you can find me on Twitter at James Wallington and on Instagram at James.Wallington. And seriously, don't forget my Twitter, at James Wallington, <laughs> because next Friday I will be attending the finale party here in Los Angeles with a lot of the racers from this season. So I will be giving live updates. I will tweet pictures. The work. So make sure to follow me if you want to be a part of all of the action. And we will be back next Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to recap the amazing race finale for season 27. Have a great week, everyone. Bye, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.